Happy Friday, all you Mentees. This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition, and join me today for part two of the comprehensive reading order of X-Force in Collected Editions. So, please stay tuned. And welcome back, everybody. Now, before I get started, huge shout out to our patrons for voting for this. Every month, we have a poll on our Patreon where our patrons vote for what the next reading order should be. Uh, the one coming up today or tomorrow is going to be either every DC event in chronological order in collected editions or every Marvel event in chronological order in collected editions. So if you want to join that, that'd be awesome. It's a great way to support the channel if you can do so. Now, let's get started with part two. So if you haven't seen part one, maybe go back and watch that. I don't know why you'd be watching part two, but you know what? You're more than welcome to stay if you haven't watched part one. I'm not biased. So let's start with X-Force Rage War. Now, in my last video, I mentioned how everything was about to change for X-Force and these characters and the creative teams. So this is the final, or what I like to call the final issues of X-Force. And I'll explain why in a little bit. Uh, Warren Ellis is joined by Ian Eddington to kind of finish up and wrap up his storylines because he was also writing X-Man and he was also writing Counter X. Uh, the Generation X title. So there were three titles he was kind of writing. You know, it's War and Alice, so I think he got bored. Some of the characters got new powers, so some characters changed. And then we have X Force 115, which, like I mentioned to me, is the final volume one of X Force before things change. And I don't mean changing in just the way they look, but also in the way things are written. So this is Ecstatics. This is the Omnibus. It's now available in complete collections, or Volume 1 is. Volume 2 will be out later this year. But this contains the final issues of X-Force, and that is X-Force 116 to 129. So why don't I consider those part of the X-Force Volume 1? Well, because Marvel Comics decided to just uh, kind of distance themselves from the comics code, the authority code that you would see on... Uh, just about every comic. So that means they were going to change in the way that the book's uh, storytellings were done or the tone of the book. Some of them became more mature. And this also collects the Ecstatics issues. So X-Force went from being X-Force to being called Ecstatics. Uh, the same thing happened to Cable. He went from Cable to Soldier X. And also Deadpool. Deadpool became Agent X. Now why that was? There, there's a rumor that Rob Liefeld was still cashing in on these characters because of their names. So Marvel decided, eh, what's one quick and easy way to get rid of that? Let's just change the titles of these books. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. That's just been a rumor for the longest time. But if you've not read Ecstatics, damn, it's a fun book. It's a Peter Milligan, Mike Aldred collaboration, and it's a wonderful book. I think it's one of the best books, but it is nothing, absolutely nothing like the X-Force that you read previously. As a matter of fact, it reads more like a TV show and Suicide Squad mixed together. So, for many years, X-Force is just gone. Some of the characters had assimilated into other teams. Cannonball was hanging out with Extreme X-Men. Huh, Extreme X-Men. That would make a pretty badass omnibus, just saying. Uh, and, you know, they, some characters were just gone. They were missing in action. Now, Rob Liefeld decided to come back, and this actual, the actual title for this is The Legend Returns. I want to think that that's talking more about X-Force than Rob Liefeld, but who knows. Now, there was a little spin-off series from this. It was just called Shatterstar. X-Force Shatterstar. It was drawn by Marat Michaels, written by Marat Michaels and Fabian Iciesa doing the script. But because of this, because Fabian Iciesa returned with this, there was a demand for Cable. So then we got Cable and Deadpool, the ongoing series by Fabian Iciesa, with some covers by Rob Liefeld. So if not for this, we would not have had that title. Then again, the characters went missing, but we got a new team of X-Force, and it all starts here in the pages of Messiah Complex, available in Milestone and Trade Paperback. This is where the characters of X-Force are born the new X-Force, and that is this elite espionage, ass-kicking, killing machines right here. So this is the brainchild of uh, Yost and Kyle, who of course created X-23, went on to write the new X-Men series, and then they did this little movie that they wrote, Thor Ragnarok, but 
it's them just coming together, taking some of the ideas that they started in New X-Men and kind of just expanding on them. So this is the, yes, the spy X-Force team that is actually really badass. I love this team because there's characters of New Mutants in here, a character from X-Factor, and of course Wolverine leading this Black Ops team. But the way it's collected is a damn mess because you have three different crossovers in between with the issues of Cable, and then there's issues of X, um, X-Factor, I believe it crosses over with, or no, X-Men Legacy, I'm sorry, New Mutants. But yeah, the next book you need to read is the X-Force Cable Messiah War, which is considered the second kind of crossover in the Messiah trilogy. So starting off with Messiah Complex and then this, we'll talk about the third one. It's even got the Bishop miniseries. So only issues of uh, 14 and 16 of X-Force are collected in this. And then we go back to X-Force. This is the deluxe hardcover. These are available in complete collections. I'm hoping one day we get an omnibus of this stuff because it is gorgeous to look at. So yes, here have we have issues 12 and 13 and then skipping the issues that were in the Messiah War and coming back with 17 and 20 and other issues. This kind of wraps up. Um, actually, Sex and Violence should be the last thing you read. So keep that in mind. That's collected in here. That's the three issue. Yeah, this three issue miniseries with Domino and um, Wolverine. Beautifully drawn. Because issues 21 through 25 collected in this awesome hardcover. This is the X Necrotia or Necrotia X. Um, some people like to call it. This has issues 21 through 25 of X-Force. So this really is a send-off to some of the characters of X-Force. That's why I said maybe read Sex and Violence after reading this. Because this sends off some of the characters. This is a really awesome story. And it's interesting because this was going on at the same time that uh, Blackest Night was going on at DC. And it's kind of the same premise. Characters are coming back from the dead in this evil, zombified version of themselves. But... I think it's done in a really unique way that it didn't seem like they were ripping anybody off. It's actually a damn good story with beautiful artwork. And then that leads into the third part of the Messiah trilogy and that is Second Coming. This has the final issues of X-Force and also things happen to some of the X-Men characters. But this is a pretty good crossover. This is kind of like the last hurrah for Kyle and Yost as far as the mutant titles. And it's got beautiful artwork. I forgot that Mike Choi... I think he's over at Valiant now, was one of the lead artists on X-Force at the time. And just a tiny spoiler, this is where the story of Uncanny X-Force begins. And we all know that title because that omnibus has been recently reprinted. And coming back again for a second uh, batch of printing, I guess, in July is what David Gabriel said from Marvel. And one more thing, even though these OHCs are out of print, they are available as milestones, by the way. So that takes us to this beast i've done an overview of this but this is uncanny x-force by rick remender every single issue is collected in here there was a spin-off series later on featuring some of the characters but this is an all-in-one story it's all self-contained in here if you want to read a little more after the events that happen in these books and you really enjoy it and you want to see where some of these characters go uh, check out Wolverine and the X-Men by Jason Aaron, as well as Uncanny Avengers, because Rick Remender takes over that, and he takes some of the stories that he started within the pages here and kind of wraps them up over there. So if you're a fan, especially of the first uh, story arc with the Apocalypse um, story, then yeah, definitely check out Uncanny Avengers after this. While Rick Remender did decide to move on, Marvel decided to keep the title of Uncanny X-Force going. Now, we are in the Marvel Now age. That's what this is called. So, this is Uncanny X-Force, Let It Bleed. That's how it starts out. Volume 1 by Sam Humphreys. This is a brand new team of X-Force. Uh, maybe some things from Uncanny X-Force by Rick Remender were in here, but for the most part... Most of that stuff was already closed out. Most of that storyline was over and done. But it is nice to see Spiral and Puck back in the spotlight for, well, for a little while. As long as this lasted. Here's Volume 2, Torn and Frayed. So, there's beautiful artwork in here. But to be completely honest with you, I don't know. The stories really never captivated me. They were at best okay. That's, that's just my opinion. I never really got attached to the team i never understood 
why Bishop and Storm would be hanging out with these people, but hey, that's just my opinion. But it does have some really gorgeous artwork. I think that's one of the biggest selling points to this. And also if you're a completist like myself. Here's Volume 3, The Great Corruption. And one thing I will say is that during this time, there's also another X-Force title. Because I guess Marvel thought, you know, people really like X-Force. And people really like Cable. And we don't know exactly what to do with Cable. So why don't we make another title and just call it Cable and X-Force. So I'll talk about that here in a second. But yes, this here, this particular trade paperback does contain the crossover with um, Cable and X-Force. And the final issues of this Uncanny X-Force title and like i mentioned here is cable and x-force now the title of uncanny x-force finished with issue 17 this title went on i think all the way up to issue 19 again this is during the marvel now era salvador la roca it does most of the artwork uh, at least in the first trade or in the first arc rather and this is written by dennis hopeless so it's the story of cable and hope domino Colossus, just a couple of other characters that don't really fit in, but it was nice to see Forge again in the X-Men lore. So there's other things going on within the pages of X-Men. There's inner fighting, I guess, and maybe you need to read a little bit about what's going on there. Um, that is all written by um, Brian Michael Bendis during this time. And here is Volume 2. Again, Salvador La Roca. I guess he stuck around for a while. I thought he did the first two arcs. Maybe he did the first three arcs. And again, written by Dennis Hopeless. And I think Colin Bunn actually joins in later on. There's a yeah cameo by the Uncanny Avengers. So here we have Volume 3. And this is the fight with the Uncanny Avengers. But again, now we have... Colin Bunn co-writing some of this stuff and we also have Salvador La Roca I think he ends up leaving the book with this issue he may come I thought he came back maybe for the final issue but yeah he's joined on artwork by this gentleman right here and that is Gerardo Sandoval who has a very how do I put it Humberto Ramos look to his style so here's Cable Next Force, Vendetta. This is the final volume. This is volume four. This also contains some of the issues that were collected in that Uncanny X-Force book. Um, Dr. Nemesis is also in Cable's team. But you know what? I'm just a huge fan of Forge, the maker, Genesis. I really thought he had an awesome story arc and he was such a kick-ass character. Big fan of his, especially during the Fall of the Mutants. So even though he's in here in his his role really is kind of silly. Eh, it was just nice to see him again in the pages of an X title. So this book gets canceled, but Marvel's not done. They're like, wait, we got to try it again. Why don't we get in Cy Spurrier and this artist right here, who I really love. This is Rock He Kim, who has an awesome kick-ass name, drawing X-Force. And again, this is a new team of X-Force, Cy Spurrier. I don't think he even... Yeah, he doesn't really acknowledge a lot of the past. And maybe that was my biggest issue with this title right here. Oh yeah, and Jorge Molina helps in with some of the artwork. Here is Volume 2, where they're fighting a new Excalibur team. Again, wonderful artwork. Rocky Kim drawing it and Cy Spurrier writing it. Well, I did enjoy Cy Spurrier's, um, uh, the Legion book that he did. I thought that was excellent. This X4 group, I don't know, just didn't really do anything for me. Or maybe I was just too burned out on X-Force by the time this title came out. So here's the final volume, volume three. And one thing I forgot to mention is that this X-Force run is during the Marvel, all new Marvel now. That's what it was called, that era. So this finishes out Cy Spurrier's run on X-Force. Um, and he is joined by Rocky Kim and Tang Eng Huap, I believe is the one that finishes out this run. Don't want to flip to the end here. But I think one of my biggest issues is that he adds to the complexity of Phantom X, which was a Grant Morrison character. And honestly, I don't blame writers for trying. 
but I think some things just need to be kept in the dark and a mystery. So X-Force is canceled again. As a matter of fact, a bunch of titles are canceled. And then we get this event right here, Extermination. And Extermination is pretty much the story of, hey, we need to get these original five mutants, Beast, Archangel, sorry, not Archangel, not yet, Marvel Girl, Cyclops, and Iceman back to their original timeline. That's where they need to go. So this introduces us to a new character that will play a pivotal role in the pages of the new X-Force title. That's why I mentioned reading this first. Here we go again, X-Force Sins of the Past with a brand new team. This time they're adding Deathlock, but Deathlock was already in the Uncanny um, X-Force run, but we have Boom Boom back. Shatterstar, Warpath, and Cannonball, along with Domino and this mysterious young man who I cannot reveal who that is. But this is after the pages of Extermination. Not 100% sure, even though some writers claim that Marvel, the editors informed the writers that, hey, this is just temporary because we have this guy named Jonathan Hickman. He's coming and taking over the book. Here, let's talk about the final issues. And here's volume two, The Counterfeit King. Yeah, so I'm not sure if Marvel informed them. I know some writers claim they did. But the way some this story particularly was written, it felt like there was a lot more to do. But yes, eventually Jonathan Hickman took over. And they told him, yeah, every single X title was going to be canceled. And we were going to start over a new. So the next thing to read, to add to your list, is House and Powers of X. And if you've not read this, if you've been sleeping under a rock, I hate that saying. I've never used it. I sound like an old man now. Maybe it's me in my old age. But anyway, if you don't know anything about this, maybe you should read it anyway. It's a wonderful read. But this sets the new status quo for not just X-Force, but every single X title. And now we have Dawn of X. X-Force starts over again. But it's in this new, like I said, world, post, house, and powers of X. And uh, Benjamin Piercy is the lead writer on it. Now, you can collect it this way. Here's the book. I believe Dustin Weaver did the artwork. Or you can collect it in the X-Force trade paperback that comes out later this year. By the way, this, this, is, this was one of my favorite books, the X-Force book. I thought it was quite excellent, the way it was written. So... Um, yes, you can read it in the Dawn of X, which collects all six of the books in chronological order. So Dawn of X Volume 1, of course, having all the number one issues. Volume 2, having X-Force 2 and Excalibur 2 and Uncanny, Uncanny X-Men 2 and so on. Or you can get it in the X-Force trade paperback, which collects the first six issues and that comes out later on this year. Now, you can purchase most of these books from our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off the cover price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on packaging your books so they arrive safely and in excellent condition, as well as prompt and helpful service. And check out their bargain bin for even greater deals up to 90% off cover price. And for you minties, Cheap Graphic Novels is renting a special promotion. If you're a first-time customer, let them know you were referred by Near Mint Condition at the checkout, and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for U.S. customers. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discounts, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was it. That was part two. Let me know in those comments down below if I left anything out or if you have any more questions. I love talking to you all and answering each of the comments. If you haven't joined our Patreon, please think about doing so. The next poll is actually going up today or tomorrow. And that is either every DC event in chronological order in collected editions or every Marvel event in chronological order in collected editions. It's up to the Patreons to vote, so I guess we'll see what happens in the month of June. Please don't forget to hit that like, subscribe button if you haven't subscribed, ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. I will be doing a Q&A on Saturday morning, 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time like I normally do. So if you want to join for that, that'd be awesome to have you live. More importantly, please everybody stay healthy, stay safe, and remember, more importantly, please everybody stay healthy, stay safe, and much love to all of you.